Hello, hello, my workplace warriors. If you're stopping by my channel for the first time, welcome. If you're stopping by for... Hello, hello, my workplace warriors. If you're stopping by my channel for the first time, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. I'm on a mission to help you live your very best career life. And I'm doing it one video at a time. So I welcome your return visits to my videos when I upload new ones. And I also encourage you to comment, let me know what types of things you would like for me to, um, to discuss and share with you during my videos. But without further ado, we're going to continue our series. I don't know how many parts it's going to have to it, but we've been um, doing a series on ways to avoid getting fired. And if you saw the last video, you know, we talked about, I shared with you some ways to avoid getting fired for being constantly late to work. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about ways to avoid getting fired from your job because you're absent too often. You know, the work has to get done. So the only way that you can get the work done is to show up for work. And it doesn't matter if it's remotely, if you're allowed to work remotely sometimes um, or all the time, or if you have to be on site to work. It's very important that you show up as often as you can as scheduled. And there are also ways that you should handle when you do have to take an absence day or a leave day. So we're gonna talk about all of that. So let's get started. Now we know that the pressure to perform sometimes is um, overshadowed or the flexibility of a job is sometimes overshadowed by the pressure to perform. And um, beyond performance, there is attendance. And it is a very critical aspect of employment. So while occasional absences are um, expected, constant Patterns of missed days from missed scheduled days from work can put your job security at risk and your livelihood and lifestyle. So, if you're worried about excessive absences jeopardizing your um, your position, then this post likely is for you. So, let's look at ten proactive ways that you can ensure that your attendance at work is consistent and you maintain a, it'll help you maintain a positive standing with your employer. So the first, um, the first thing that we're gonna look at is making sure that you know your company's attendance policy. I always encourage my clients that the first day that they step foot on that job and even sometimes before as an HR professional, when I'm offered or have been offered a new position, I usually will ask, can I go ahead and get a copy of the employee handbook? Because if I'm given my current job a two week notice that I'm going to be starting a new job, then you know HR has to be able to um, interpret policy so I'll go ahead and ask my new employer for a copy of the handbook so that I can start start studying the policies so just know that by asking for and reviewing a copy of your organization's policy it will provide for you acceptable reasons for absences and then also the protocol for um, reporting absences excuse me when you have to be away um, from work 
then it will also um, help you to know what the consequences of excessive absences past a certain limit, what those consequences will be. And um, just by knowing these guidelines, familiarizing yourself with them, it will help you to successfully manage your absences proactively and plan out things like personal appointments and what have you in a way that the impact to business operations and your attendance at work will be minimal, hopefully, and help to avoid any misunderstandings or negative consequences to you. Then, number two, you want to prioritize your preventive health care because some of the reasons why people are absent is because they're not feeling well and it may not always be a very serious illness but uh, but if you're not focused on um, healthy self-care or effective self-care or proactive self-care then you may be susceptible or become susceptible, more susceptible to things like the common cold, flu, let's not forget COVID, or any other types of um, illnesses that if you just practice um, self-care, a self-care routine, hopefully it will minimize your exposure to as well as your probability of getting sick. So make sure that you go to your doctor's appointments for your annual physicals. Make sure you exercise, try and eat um, healthy, and um, make sure that you're just getting the right amount of rest. And you would be surprised that even the right amount of sleep can go such um, a long way to helping you to prevent unexpected illnesses. And when, when and if you do get a little sick, then you'll probably find that you will um, bounce back. Don't know why my nose is itching so much. Um, will bounce back usually much more quickly than someone who is not participating or practicing um, self-care. So make sure that you take care of your mental, physical, spiritual, and emotional health, and financial health. It all kind of rolls in. They all kind of roll up together and become one package, which is that awesome package of you. So number three is to track your lead. Know how much leave you accrue each pay period, however your employer awards leave time. Um, and also make sure you keep track of the absences that you take. Like some places have PTO, so have a PTO bank or paid time off bank. That's what PTO stands for. And so any leave that an employee takes comes out of that PTO bank. Now jobs such as mine have separate banks for separate types of leave. So we have a, um, a bank of annual, what we call annual leave, and it's just basically um, vacation time. And um, so whenever we're taking like pleasure days off or, or what have you to do, um, or just to um, have a little leave from, from work, um, mental health day or something, we'll, we'll usually use annual leave. And we accrue that leave at a higher rate based on the length of time that we've been employed with um, the organization. Then we have a separate bank for sick leave, and that's for our illnesses. And so we can use that for when we are not feeling well, or if we have to take a block of time off from work, if we have to have a medical procedure, um, or if we have to take um, our child or spouse to um, a doctor appointment or what have you, or dental appointments for um, you and your family members, you can take, um, you can utilize your accrued sick leave time. So just make sure you keep a close track on the time that is coming in 
and the time that is going out is sort of like money. Keep track of the ins and outs of it so that you won't be surprised um, at a later date when you did not keep um, a track of your time. And um, this, you'll find that this approach, um, which is very proactive, will allow you to plan ahead and avoid, mostly avoid, last minute scrambling for unplanned absences. Then, the fourth step that you can take is to be open and honest about upcoming absences. If you know in advance that you'll need time off for a doctor's appointment, a family event, um, a planned vacation, let your manager know as soon as possible. Typically, we work as on teams, and so we're not the only person who might want to take some time off. So make sure you let your manager know so that he or she can make sure that they um, keep business operations covered while also um, supporting employees when they need their time off from work to just take a mental, a physical, or emotional break. Um, we all need that. It's great for our mental health. Um, then also know that this um, particular uh, proactive approach as well is far better than springing a surprise absence on your manager and your team, your colleagues, um, at the last minute. You will find that they will, they might give you some grace a couple of times, but if, if that's how you normally handle your time off, they're not going to be very pleased with you in the long run. And you won't be seen as a team player. So number five, I recommend that you utilize your available leave options creatively. So like I said, my job has separate leave banks for different types of leave. And um, so, so do many other employers. They have different options, like standard sick days. Um, sometimes you may have personal days um, or bereavement leave or even flex time arrangements. So understand that these options allow you to manage your personal needs without disrupting um, business operations and also without unnecessarily sacrificing your sick leave for non-health absences and um, I think and it will work out, out a whole lot better between you and your co-workers as I said earlier. They'll greatly appreciate that and be considerate. They'll find that your creative solutions to use and leave as long as it's within company policy will be considered um, very considerate for lack of a better word. So, number six is to maintain clear communication during your absences. Um, even when an absence is unavoidable, stay connected with your work. Depending on the nature of your absence and company culture, check in um, with your manager or via email um, periodically by providing updates to your manager on your availability. Don't provide updates to your coworkers. Um, they don't have to know. And also be mindful of just how much you want to be clear, but also you should not be sharing personal health information with your manager. Um, you should be sharing that with human resources if you have to be out for an extended period of time due to health reasons. And just your checking in periodically will demonstrate your continued commitment and it will keep you in the loop of any urgent matters that might require your attention. And like I always tell my team, I would rather you call me and give me a heads up about something that is happening while I'm out than to walk back into a quagmire into a you know, seemingly impossible situation. Because then, if it, is a seeming, if it is a seemingly impossible situation that has escalated to that point, 
all of that rest and relaxation that I supposedly got while I was away from work on leave, it'll be gone. It will just evaporate because then I'll be stressed again. So my rest and relaxation will be all used up. So just think about that. Number seven, delegate responsibilities effectively. Um, and you want to make sure that you do things like put your out of office message on. Um, my organization uses um, Microsoft, the Microsoft Suite. And so we have Teams and um, Microsoft Outlook. And so we try to make absolutely sure that we put our out of office message on our, um, in our workspace, in our queue. Um, when we're out and part of the reason also is not only to let people know that I'm out but also to let them know who they should contact for what reasons in my absence and then that keeps employees and managers from being frustrated because they all understand that we need some time away but make sure that you make that a part of your your out of office practice have an out of office voice message that callers will be able to um, hear when they call when you're out. And then also, um, that same message should be included in your, um, as a response in your email box so that people sending you email messages will know, okay, Cynthia didn't respond in like um, three days, but I know she's on vacation, so she'll probably be out for the entire week. So I look forward to hearing from her when she returns on next week. It'll, it's just a proactive approach to um, effective customer service and also um, preparing your colleagues for picking up the slack, you know, while you're um, away from the workplace. The number eight is return prepared to catch up. As I said, you get that rest and relaxation. You don't want to walk into a quagmire. But you also should expect that there will probably be some things that you need to catch up on um, so that you can um, know where to jump in, what is a priority, what is a little bit less of a priority, and kind of develop your game plan. When I'm off um, from work on approved leave, I typically try and check in check my email like the day before I return, maybe that evening or something, and write down some notes so I have an idea of what I need to um, address when I'm back in the office. Um, and because those first impressions matter, remember, returning from approved leave is another first impression. And um, you want to make sure that you keep your customer service front of mind when you return so that you can respond to those um, email messages and voice messages that were left for you um, while you were out. And um, moving right along, number nine, address the root cause of, of your absences. I mean, I'm one of those people who has often had a difficult time getting out of the house in a timely manner too, so I'm not criticizing anyone. Thank God I have a little bit of flexibility in when I have to be um, in the office on the days that I work on site. And I also make sure I work a full eight hour day too. I don't go in at nine and leave at four unless there, unless I have an appointment or I'm not feeling well and have to leave or something like that. You're typically, if I don't get into the office until nine, I'm going to stay at least until six o'clock because I don't want any questions about my integrity. And there's always enough work to do every minute that I'm there. So, so I just make sure that I'm staying true to what my work schedule is that um, I should be expected to keep. So when you address the root cause, like for instance, my root cause was trying to do everything in the mornings before I leave, excuse me, after I get up, um, wanting to do non-getting ready for work related things and, um, and throwing myself, um, throwing myself behind on my morning schedule. 
So what I'm trying to do now is do a better job of scheduling ahead of time, um, preparing my lunch before I um, retire for the evening and, and um, go to bed. And then also just talking with my manager and saying, hey, I'm one of those people who has a hard time getting down with the house on time. How much flexibility can you grant me? Or, you know, just when you're talking or what have you, just tell them, yeah, you know, I'm um, trying to to schedule my time better and pre-plan in the evenings um, so that I can get out of the house on time in the mornings. And just those little conversations can go such a long way. So remember to address the root cause and then put in incremental steps to help you overcome the the um, the thing that is helping that is keeping you from leaving um, home on time. Then number ten, which is last but definitely not least, is open communication. Maintain open communication with your manager. And um, if your absence is due to a health condition, go and talk to your HR department. Find out what type of documentation you need to get from your doctor in order to have it placed in your file. And if you have certain types of um, health conditions that will impact your ability to work every day, you may qualify for what we call a reasonable accommodation under the um, Americans with Disabilities Act. So uh, always make sure that you research and um, ask questions and take advantage of the services and opportunities for um, support that are available to you. Then also, I'll say, I'll call this 10A. Utilize your, take advantage of your employee assistance program. They can make some great suggestions to you on how to handle the situation. If you're navigating um, work um, while you're living with um, a health condition or what have you, and they, they along with your HR department, excuse me, can also help you to um, plan your conversation with your manager um, when you're letting them know that you are facing a health condition. And they'll be more willing to work with you because they won't feel that you're, you know, hiding something. I'm not saying that they're going to bend completely over backwards, but um, when you make um, work arrangements to have your your tasks, work tasks, um, covered, or if you may need to request to reduce your hours temporarily, and you've spoken with your manager, you're keeping the um, keeping the lines of communication open. You'll find that they'll be more supportive and understanding, and they also may be more willing to to work with you as well. So keep that up. I don't know why my nose keeps itching, so I apologize for that. It must be my allergies. But in conclusion, just remember that consistent attendance is um, a cornerstone of successful of a successful work ethic. So by implementing the strategies that I've shared with you um, today, you will demonstrate your commitment to your employer um, by safeguarding your job and fostering a positive work relationship. So remember, I'm on a mission to help you um, live your best career life. I'm doing it one video at a time. I would love for you to return for future videos. And if you know someone else who would like to live their best career life, please like, share, and subscribe um, to my subscribe to my channel. But like and share this video so that YouTube will um, push it out to more people and share um, with them the information that I have to offer that will help you to live your very best career life. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And until then, career success to you.